All right. Hey, everyone. This is Adam here, Worldwide Stereo. Thank you for joining today, our live feed. Uh, it's going to be a special one. We have a guest speaker here today. We have Matt from AudioQuest. Uh, so it's going to be definitely a fun show. Welcome, Matt. Uh, if y'all don't know, I'm Adam here, Worldwide Stereo. I've been with the company about 11 years. Uh, you can catch me. I do a lot of YouTube videos and uh, training videos there, so you can always check me out there. Uh, again, been with Worldwide Stereo for 11 years. Worldwide Stereo, we got two showrooms. We have our online business. There's a lot we do. We have custom installation. Um, so it's a real fun company to work for. Uh, again, we have Matt here from AudioQuest. Matt, how, how long have you been with AudioQuest now? Uh, I've been on AudioQuest uh, overall almost five years now. Um, loving it over here. It's a great company to work for, a good group of people. Um, I don't know how much you know about the history of AudioQuest, but we've been around almost as long as Worldwide Stereo. So we're 1980, so we're a 40 year old company as well. Wow, okay. Um, yeah, we've been doing this, we've been doing this for a long time, all owned and founded by, by Bill Loaf. Same guy, still runs the ship today. So it's actually a pretty cool spot to be. Excellent. Excellent. So I want to kind of summarize here and get, uh, you know, we're going to wait for some people to kind of join in here just so everybody knows if you do ask me a question, there's about a 30 second lag or so between by the time that I'll uh, uh, get it or so. So there's a little lag in video and things like that. But we want to try and answer as many questions as you can. So please comment, ask, ask questions. We're happy to help out. Um, if you have some real specific questions, you can always direct message us um, and we'll love to get back to you here. Um, we have also, if I show you here, check this out. There we go. If you ever have any questions, you can always reach out to us at uh, that phone number there, or you can email us at a hello at worldwidestereo.com. There we go. Uh, but today, what we really want to focus on is, I mean, audio as a whole, but uh, specifically kind of diving into streaming services and talking about a home office um, and, and what that looks like in today's real audio system. So, you know, a, a computer audio, streaming content. We want to talk about streaming services. And I see uh, Matt there. You're in your office, right? Yeah, this is this is where I get all my work done. This is where they say the magic happens. Um, <laughs> and I see behind you there, you got quite the uh, little setup. Why don't you take us through that? What you got there? Yeah, so this is my my home, what I call my home office hi-fi. And sadly enough, this is my highest hi-fi in the whole house. So sorry, wife and kids, but this is this is the good stuff. I kind of save it for myself. Yeah, um, I guess that not the nicest thing in the world, but whatever. Um, so what I've got here, it all starts with the Niagara 3000, which is a brand new um, low Z powered noise dissipation system from AudioQuest. So this is our mm -hmm. new um, rack mount piece, seven outlets, high current. It's it's the kind of the, the staple of the system. This is the only piece that will never change. Um, the Niagara series is something that has to live in my system. Um, uh, I've got to go into a Cyrus 1 HD integrated amplifier. So a nice, nice. entry level, inexpensive integrated amp with a nice DAC in it. And yeah. over here, this this bad boy, thanks to the to the Weisfelds, Harry and Matt from VPI, is a uh, VPI Prime Signature turntable with an Audio Technica cartridge on it, and it also awesome. uses the VPI Phono Stage. And yeah. I got to tell you, it hurt my back to take it out of the car, but it was well <laughs> worth it. it on my, in my in my system here. Um, it's all obviously wired with AudioQuest stuff, and then I've got some brand new speakers I'm, I'm listening to right now that I'm really starting to enjoy. Uh, Golden Ear BRX uh -huh. um, bookshelf yeah. speakers. They're called Bookshelf Reference from Golden Ear, and uh, at, you know, at fifteen ninety nine a pair, they're, they're pretty tough to beat right now. So I'm thoroughly enjoying what I'm listening to. Yeah, it changes all the time, but I think what I've got now is going to stick because it's making sweet music, and I'm really enjoying listening to it. So. That's I'm sure that sounds, yeah, that's got to sound fantastic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm jealous of that turntable. That looks really nice. I'd love to have right, one of those. You can't, you can't have it. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in talking in, in home office, again, let's let's start focusing on the on the streaming content. OK, when you're dealing with let's just let's take a step back and realize what we have going on here. We're normally I mean, we need to hear speakers are analog. So speakers are analog machines and we definitely want to. You know, we, we need to convert digital music and streaming content is is digital. So somewhere along the line, there's got to be what's called a DAC. So you're going to hear us today talking a lot about what a DAC is, a digital to analog converter. Um, and that's important in this entire chain here to do anything from our, our streaming setups, whether we're streaming from a service like Tidal and Cobuzz or uh, whether we're playing music back from a hard drive. So you're going to hear us talk about DACs a lot. Cabling, definitely important. And uh, Matt, you're going to help me out with explaining the differences in some of the cables and ways that we can hook things up and then managing your power. That's also very, very important, whether it's 
uh, you know, just a power cord into the amplifier or, you know, your products, your power quest products and Niagara products and handling the power coming out of the wall. Cause that's where everything starts. So that's the most important thing. So I'd like to get going here and first let's, uh, Let's hit on streaming services because that's a big thing. The typical office setup, you're going to probably be streaming from some type of service. And when you look at all the services that are available, you got to have a reference point, I think, of somewhere where it's the the, the quality of the audio that you want to hit. Um, and there's so many services out there. And I think Tidal and Cobuzz are kind of the two that most of us are, are gearing towards. Do you use any one of those, Matt? I actually use them both. So I'm a, I'm a Rune software guy. And you know, for those of you that don't know what Rune is, it's a front-end software. It's a fantastic piece of software. I'm pretty sure Adam, you use it yeah. as well. Um, but it aggregates all your content that you have in your home library with Tidal and Cobuzz, and it's all at high res. And mm -hmm. I use both of them to stream. Um, you know, I've got a room server here that handles all that, and it all comes right from my laptop. And I, I stream all day when I work, you know, because usually I'm doing stuff and I don't have time to get over and fool up the album all the time to flip mm -hmm. it over. So, yeah. yeah. It's not the most convenient thing to do while I'm working. So, yeah, I'm streaming almost all day, every day. Well, there on my turntable, I got you beat then because my turntable, it's a JVC model, uh, late 70s, early 80s. And I actually have a repeat mode. So I can just keep going back and at least playing the same side. Yeah, I'm, automatic. I'm, waiting, turn it, so. I'm waiting for them to come out with the, you know, the, <laughs> the flip turntable. But I'm not, I'm not thinking yeah. that's coming anytime soon. So you mentioned Rune, and that's something that Rune is a service, guys, that's out there that really is, I think, in my opinion, one of the best ways to get digital content into your system. Um, they do specifically a lot to manage and take care of that digital file. You know, digital files are, you know, millions or billions of ones and zeros out there. And, you know, you, they can be misinterpreted. So it's important to make sure that they're carefully handled going into your system. So Rune seems to do the best job with it. It is a subscription-based service to be able to use it or to get the software, um, but totally worth it in my opinion. Um, so let's see here, let's take a look, guys. If you have any questions, you can put those in the comments. I'm gonna take a second here to see if there's any uh, questions that we have so far before we kind of dig into some other things. Uh, don't yeah, see everybody's just saying hi. I would, I would look at my favorite thing about Rune is that when I'm listening to a song, whether it's in my library on one of my NAS drives or or on Tidal or Cobas, it takes you down that rabbit hole of music and it says, you might oh, also yeah. like, and I can spend hours <laughs> light, I'm, I'm thumb up, thumb up, thumb up, because it's just, I'm discovering all this new music every day and what what's life without new music, right? We can listen to classic rock all day, every day, but I constantly find new music and that's what I really love about software like that and streaming. It's so easy to find different stuff. Oh yeah, I'll start on the eighteen twelve overture and end up at Green Day or something like I don't know, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or Van Halen or something like that. It's amazing how you can just crazy. go to yeah. that wormhole. Um, so let's get started here with with talking about some DACs and specifically from AudioQuest. You have a line of uh, DACs that are called the Dragonflies, and I happen to have here. So I've been through many of these here. So this is the original Dragonfly, the black, the original one that came out. And then you did a revision where you did a new black, which I don't have, but I did grab the red. And then the newest one, which is called the Cobalt. So guys, these are USB DAC headphone amplifiers and you just take the top off and yeah, it looks like a, you know, it looks like a thumb drive. Okay. And you got a standard USB A connection there. And then on the back end, you know, you have a eighth inch stereo mini output right there, which you can either run into headphones or you can take that output and set your output to fixed and run it into a, uh, um, you know, a preamp or an integrated amp. I actually used one of these on the back of a Rune Nucleus at our showroom and ran the sound into one of our Macintosh preamps. So that was a lot of fun. And one of the cool things I think about these is that these are all what's called MQA enabled. All right. That's a term out there. It stands for master quality authenticated, everyone. And you get that from the service called Title. So Title normally streams at, and this is important, normally streams at regular Red Book CD quality. Okay. And if you really want to put a number to that, it's 1,411 kilobits per second. Um, when you look at a service like Spotify, Apple Music, um, they're all much, much lower than that. Spotify is, I think, the best all around one for, of the mainstream services. Um, and they stream at 320 kilobits per second. But when you compare that to 1,411, that, that's a big loss of information. You know, it's almost 
four or five times the amount of information. I think we would all agree that a one megapixel picture doesn't look quite as good as a four or five megapixel picture. So it's a similar kind of analogy there. And on top of the 1411 or the Red Book CD quality from Title, you get that master quality authenticated track that's available. Not everything's there, but the library is pretty huge. And that is if, if say, Matt and I went into a record studio and we made an album beside it, maybe sounding bad or something like oh, that. Uh, hey, hey, hey. But um, no, there would be this master track. And let's say it's this big. OK, and I'm just using basic anal like, uh, uh, analogy here. Um, when you make even a CD out of it, it's only a smaller representation of that original track. So the MQA, which was developed, is a, is a way of taking that master track and sending it over the internet in a kind of, we'll call it again, for lack of a better term, zip and unzip kind of fashion. And if you have an MQA decoder on your end, i.e. one of these, you can unfold that master track and hear it. And it's much more wide open. All the listening I've done, when you go back and forth between the two, First, the MQA actually sounds quieter at first, meaning there's less volume there, but it's bigger and more wide open compared to the regular CD track. So these are these are great little products. Um, Matt, can you kind of go through here what they've done with these and how they've improved them over the years? Yeah, so there's been a steady evolution of Dragonfly product from the original 1.0 that came out somewhere around, I don't know, six or seven years ago. It was the original Dragonfly. Um, and it was a great sound. It was a revolutionary product. It, it was something totally different because it was a small form factor DAC that nobody else had done before. Nobody else had thought of. And, and the great production and development team at AQ thought this is a needed product for people to use with, with laptops and whatnot. And then being that it was so small, it evolved and it started the, the newer chipset used less power. So that made it better for portable use. So you could then plug it into a phone or an Android tablet or an iPad and use it mm -hmm. on the go. So this is a better way to get better sound from both home and portable. So right. the original black evolved into, into the new black. The original one was just called Dragonfly. The new version was called Dragonfly Black. And then we came out with Red, which gave a better DAC chip and a better controller chip. And then we upgraded Red this past summer to Cobalt. Cobalt has the same DAC chip, but a better controller chip. And it mm -hmm. also includes a couple of the features of our, of our product we call the Jitterbug which has some of the, the noise defeating properties in it, which, yeah. which filters out some of the line noise and the five volt USB bus noise. And the black, uh, the black to the red, to the cobalt, you can hear a difference as you step from one to the next. And it's, it's unbelievable um, that you think the black is really good until you hear the red. And then you think the red is really good. And then you hear the cobalt and you're like, okay, this is, this is, yeah, they can't do any more than this, but yeah, who knows? It's, it's, it's a pretty, it's been a pretty successful product for us. We, We've uh, we've had great success with it, um, and you can use it anywhere. You can use all you need, you know, on the go. You need your little Apple adapter, right? Yep. And we recommend this guy because this one has updatable software from Apple. It's the USB um, USB three with Lightning on it, yep. so you can charge and use a Dragonfly at the same time. And it just simply plugs in. And, and Adam will tell you this, and I'll tell you the same thing: that plug the Cobalt into the adapter first, then plug it into your phone. Yep. Um, the nice thing is if you have an Android device, it comes with what we call our Dragon Tail, which is a USB-C to USB-A adapter, which allows you to use this right out of the box. There it is with an Android device. Um, so you don't need anything else. Uh, you don't need to buy any other accessories and it just works. Yeah. I mean, guys out there, if you go to um, YouTube and go to the Worldwide Stereo page, I have a full review of this, uh, the Cobalt here. And the, the biggest thing that I, I was um, noticed out there was the increase in just power. This thing has so much more power than the red did. And again, you see, I've owned the red and now I have the, the cobalt. Thank you. Audio quest. Um, this is a great product on two ninety nine. It, it does a whole, whole lot. So and I see I got some questions that. here. What's it's that? Funny you say that real quick before we hit a question. It's funny you say that oh. because the red and the cobalt have the same output, but the cobalt has that noise oh. filtering in it. Right. So it brings down the noise floor, so it sounds audibly louder, although it's the same voltage output. It's all about lowering the noise. That's our whole company philosophy is do no it harm, is. right? Do no yeah, harm. This, uh, <laughs> do no harm. This, uh, this uh, little uh, video here is also going to be about what I'm going to call damage control and, and, and getting all the wiring right. Uh, if I want to look at a question here that came across, um, it says, so Rune is how you find new vinyl to buy. 
Um, really, it's it's. I mean, it can be. Yeah, when I'm listening to Ruin and it takes me down that hole, if I find an album that I really like, I may want to grab it on vinyl. So it's certainly a way to do that. Ruin is a streaming service, and you know, uh, uh, your own personal music collection. Or it's on a hard drive. It's a way of managing all of that. Um, I had another question here that I wanted to get you. Yeah, really oh, here it is. Find, this, the, find the vinyl that you want to find buy. the vinyl that find I want to buy. Music. Right, exactly. But then you got to go to one of those websites and and buy it. So this one came up. It says, I use a Node 2. Should I use RCA cables or digital? And this is a great question because uh, inside the Node 2, you have access to title. And if you want to take advantage of MQA, you have to use the analog outputs, okay? Because that uh, the, the decoder for MQA is built into the Node 2. And so I actually have, I personally, in my setup here, in my, this is my family room. I don't have a, my family room is my office. <laughs> so uh, my family room, I have a Vault 2 from Blue Sound, which incorporates a hard drive. So anybody with a large CD collection out there and you want to get that stuff into a hard drive-based system, this is a great product to do it. It's got two terabytes of hard drive uh, space on it. Um, but so when I'm listening to Tidal and I'm going to do an MQA track, I switch my system over to my RCA style input. And then if I'm using anything else, if I'm just streaming regular title, which is FLAC, you know, the 1411 that I mentioned earlier, um, I use the digital connection. And I use the external DAC that I have going into my system. So um, I hook mine up both. I think that's the best way to do it. Um, and you'll be happy, Matt. I use uh, Victoria cables for my analog connections, which I love. I think they're great. So uh, you should look into those. I think there was one more question I wanted to get to here. Hey, leave the, leave the question up so I can so I can read it. I'm a little slower than you are. Here you go. Here's one. Can you use the AudioQuest DAX in full stereo system, not just headphones? If so, what do you need to hook it up with? What gear do you need? Why don't you take that one, Matt? Yeah, so that's really that's a great question. Yes, you can use um, any of the Dragonflies into a into a traditional hi-fi system. All you need is a what we call is a 3.5 or an eighth inch to RCA cable. Uh, we make them starting at about 29 bucks for a three footer and all the way up. Adam's got Victoria. Um, entry level is called uh, Tower. Then there's Evergreen. So they've all got cool names, but uh, all you need is a 3.5 or an eighth inch to RCA goes out of the Dragonfly and into your system. And then you can use your computer for volume control, or you could set it as a fixed output and then use your hi-fi as volume control. So all you need is the cable, um, mini to RCA and the length, obviously that will get you there. Okay. All right. So, so far, everybody, we've, uh, we've kind of introduced ourselves. We've talked about uh, like an office setup that, that Matt has right there and what goes into that kind of system, you know, turntables and streaming services. And now we've just dove a little bit into talking about streaming services, um, Tidal, um, Cobuzz, we mentioned Rune. Um, so any follow-up questions, you know, please uh, either direct message us or you can reach out to us um, here on this phone number or you can email us at the hello at worldwidestereo.com. Okay. So let's move forward a little bit. I think next we want to get into, um, all right, so let's say my computer is my main hookup. I want to do everything through my computer um, and I want to send that into my system. You know, what kind of connectivity is that? Well, most computers these days are going to have USB-C style connections um, and we want to send that into our integrated amp or our DAC. So um, right now from, from AudioQuest, what type of, you know, cabling or USB-C offerings are there um, that we can that we can do that with, Matt? So, boy, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked. Um, we'll be launching a full line. We currently have USB A to B, um, USB A to micro. We have, um, you know, every flavor of USB cable. We have lightning cables to USB A. What we'll be launching in a couple of weeks, a full line of USB C to C and USB C to lightning cables. So you'll be able to use those USB-C DACs and take advantage of that higher um, transfer rate on um, uh -huh. a new MacBook Pro. Those will be out in the next couple of weeks. We'll actually do a pretty big launch of those and, and probably the next week or the week after we're putting together all the all the product announcements right now, but they're in the barn and we're ready to ship. So we're just putting it all together. But to get that higher transfer speeds and everything and USB-C is the future is the way to go. We're at USB-C to C and USB-C to, to Lightning uh, coming out pretty soon. Okay. Yeah. So I have a MacBook, uh, MacBook Pro. And so right now, because it has USB-C, I have their multi connector right here with USB-C. And then I have a, an A USB-A output here along with HDMI and some others. So I've been using this and uh, then I'll personally use, I have a, the uh, carbon uh, 
USB A to B cable that I've used to connect my system. And I find that works really well. Um, but that'll be nice with the USB C cable coming out. I can just go direct into the MacBook. That'll be great. So I can't wait for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. I've got a dongle hanging off the side of my desk right now. That I can't wait to be done with. <laughs> yeah, get rid of the dongles. Mm -hmm. Oh, the dongles. Um, let's see here. So, all right. So we talked about that. We just talked about some computer, how to hook up computer. And you can do that with, folks, the your portable devices, your iPhones and your, your standard uh, uh, smartphones and tablets. Again, the USB-C connection, the USB-A. And then I think, what's that, Matt, there? You got that uh, A and K player, right? Yeah, A and K. So that's an actual portable high-res player. That's another way of doing uh, office or home audio that people are getting into. Uh, so that's a portable high-res player, and you can take outputs from that. Uh, you can plug headphones into it or connect that to uh, to your preamp and your your integrated amp system and get some high res audio out of that as well. So that's uh, those are neat products. There's also other uh, headphone DACs out there. Uh, I did a review if you want to check that out, not only on the AudioQuest Dragonfly, which I think is fantastic. Remember, uh, Macintosh, the MHA 50. That is a headphone DAC as well that has some really good power associated. I mean, let's face it, Mac is known for amplifiers and that's what they do and that that headphone amp is is really awesome so uh just another product out there to check out if you want to see that that review that we have to offer in this category uh, so all right so we talked about some usb cables that are coming out um i think i want to dive into uh talking about your speaker hookups now so you know when you have a computer audio system or a home office sometimes the category of powered speakers is going to be your best option uh just as a space saver depending on maybe you just have a desk and you want your speakers to be right there so powered speakers have been um a great category for us and i think uh for a lot of different uses even maybe a small apartment you can hook a turntable directly up to or again your phone directly up to them so we have some uh good products from canto from svs uh, Klipsch, Bowers and & Wilkins, and some Dyn Audio, uh, all powered speakers that can hook up to your computer directly. So when we're doing that, I think that goes back to some of the AudioQuest cables that we talked about already, the USB style connections, that'd be definitely helpful for that. A to B, you'll usually find on most of these a, uh, a USB B connection. That's the square, the square uh, USB connection, folks. The A connection is that flat one. Uh, well, yeah, this one, you know, that's the A and B is the square one. And that's what you'll find on these speakers to connect a computer directly to. But if they're powered speakers, that means they have an amplifier in them and they need to be plugged into the wall, which is where you come in, Matt. So when we're plugging something into the wall, what do we want to think about? So, well, we want to think about what we're using to plug it into the wall. We all know that the power cord that comes in the box is free in the box because it's not worth a whole heck of a lot. Um, we make a full line of power cables and we've actually got a brand new series of, uh, of power cables coming out called energy X that'll launch next week. Um, that are perfect for speakers that start at 299, 399, because they're more price appropriate uh -huh. than we've had in the past. So okay. energy X will be about 99 bucks for a, for a power cord that you can plug into your 499 SVSs or your 599 clip sixes, which by the way, are just off camera to my left here. And <laughs> I have a, I have an NRG Z plugged into them because of the ground noise uh, dissipation, but it's yeah. uh, it's really cool to hear the difference with a powered speaker, what a simple power cord upgrade can make. And I've got mine hooked up optical from the TV, USB from my computer, uh, you know, and I've got a turntable um, hooked up to the phono input. So they're incredibly versatile and incredibly useful powered speakers these days for people that don't have room for an amplifier or traditional hi-fi setup. You can put them almost anywhere. You can put them on your desk. Some of them are small enough. Mm -hmm. um, like Canto makes you twos that fit on a desk. And then there's, uh, you could, there are bigger ones and it's the Dyn Audios make floor standards. There's just so many choices of really good um, powered speakers or powered monitors. And to get to maximize them, all you really need to do is start out with a, a simple power cable upgrade. And then from there you can upgrade the rest of the stuff, but it makes a world of difference. Yeah. And this is, uh, I got to tell everybody out there, this is my, my most important thing in my setup is my power management. Um, it happened, God, I can't remember how years ago it was. I mean, I've been selling AudioQuest so long, but the very first power demo that I ever got, and I guess this will date it because it was the original B&W Zeppelin, which was that, you know, well, it looks like a Zeppelin, big, long football, right? And um, 
it was just an iPod dock, you know, had a 30, 30 pin connector. So there you go. How old is that? I have, <laughs> right? I have two of them. If anybody's looking, I, I still have them. You, you can bury them in the backyard. They're dead. It's okay. No, they sound good on, on <laughs> airplay. They're totally fine. Um, so yeah, I had, I had a, a demo with that. So we just used the power cord where that came with the BMW Zeppelin. And then at the time uh, it was some NRG one or 1 1.5 or something like that or originally to plug into it. And when I listened to it without it, I mean, it sounded good. The Zeppelin is a great sounding, you know, powered speaker. It was great for an iPod at that time. And then as soon as we switched the, the power cord, the, a Zeppelin imaged. I heard a left image. I heard a right. I heard a center. Everything was isolated and separated. And I just went, a $700 product just gave me stereo imaging. That is amazing. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. So from then on, I always tried all the power cords. Um, and I make sure that anything that has power in it and my system now has a upgraded power cord on it and all of mine are from AudioQuest. Um, so I'm a big believer in this, but there's, I think, one more step that you need to take in your power management. And that is to filter the power coming out of the wall. And AudioQuest has two lines of products that I'd like to talk about today. And that is the Niagara and the PowerQuest products. Um, I own both in my home. I have a Niagara 5000. I have a PowerQuest PQ3 that I use. Um, and these things are, I think, essential in any, any setup. You got to have power management. And the new Niagara line, I'll let you take it away here, Matt, um, is outstanding, designed by a true leader in the industry, in my opinion, when it comes to power management. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's hit on that, Matt. What do you got there for us on yeah. Niagara and the PowerQuest? So we were lucky enough eight, eight years ago, eight nine years ago almost, um, to hire Garth Powell, who's an industry, longtime industry veteran, who's who's brilliant, um, power product engineer and product designer, and, and one of the smartest guys I've ever had the, the pleasure of working with. Um, you know, he can spend a couple days telling you about what's inside these products, which I'm going to try and do for you in like 30 seconds. But <laughs> it's what's in the Niagara, we call them low Z power noise dissipation systems. You know, okay. some people call them power conditioners or surge protectors. It's it's got everything in that. It has linear filtration. It has um, power filtration from the wall. It has ground noise dissipation where it takes the noise out of the circuit and spits it back into the wall. It, it has um, surge suppression in it. And not only did it, does it have surge suppression in it, it has non-sacrificial surge suppression. So I That's hate to sound like the infomercial guy. Like I'm going to sound like Ron Peel for a second, but you buy a Niagara, you buy a PowerQuest, you set it and forget it, people. Set it and forget it. And forget it. <laughs> you went there. Set it. I go there all the time. Um, it's okay. But the, that's the great thing about it's it. True. It's true. It, it opened the circuit. It won't kill itself. There are other surge suppressors out there that that they'll catch on fire. They'll kill themselves before they let they kill your equipment. But then no matter how many hundreds of dollars you spent on it, it's a garbage. Right. right? And most surge suppressors use, uh, use technology in it that's been around for a while. And over time, they degrade. And a regular surge suppressor that is sacrificial after three years, it's not a surge suppressor anymore. It's a power strip. Yeah. So our non-sacrificial product power quest 199 all the way up to the Niagara 7,000 are non-sacrificial. So you buy it once and you live with it forever, which is why we recommend it on, on everything, OLED TVs, AV receivers, sound bars, anything that plugs in. I mean, it starts, I'm going to, I'm going to grab my prop. It starts at 199 for a power quest two. And then there's power quest three, which gives you eight outlets, four yep. USBs for charging, gives you the two high current outlets. It gives you what we call 4K, 8K optimized outlets, which are for mm -hmm. TVs. So they're the highest level of filtration that we have for power. Um, so you want to plug your TV into it and you're going to get a better overall picture um, because you're getting cleaner power of the television. And it works from PowerQuest up through Niagara. There's four models on the Niagara line starting at the yep. Niagara 1200 up to the 7000. Um, Two of them have seven outlets. Two of them have more. They have high current. They have linear filtered. It just all starts with power. And with these, you have to use one of our power cords because of the ground noise dissipation circuit. If you right. use a different power cord with it, it doesn't have that ground noise dissipation. It starts with energy Z and goes up. And it spits that that dirty, that noise that comes from the wall back into the wall so it never hits your system. So we're starting from, from zero noise. Then you connect everything else to it, and it really just improves the overall dynamics and overall everything of your system from there. And that was my elevator pitch, and I definitely went over <laughs> seconds, but 
it, there's a ton of tech to it. And, and you're a great guy. You're, you're a resource to talk to. So anybody has questions, Adam's your guy for, for this type of stuff at, at, at worldwide. He's uh he owns one, you live with it. So, you know, I do. It. You know I it. do. And, and what I, you know, the, I think the, the, the talking point, or we'll say the, uh, uh, discussion could be about is when people talk about amplifiers, you know, you have, everybody's always worried about plugging an amplifier into a power center because it may hurt its, its overall performance. Now let's remember, you know, audio quest, their, their, their motto or their manifesto is do no harm. You know, they don't want to harm anything. All cables get in the way of everything that we're trying to do. So you have to look at it from, okay, brand X company built this amplifier and they built it to do perform at this level, but all the cables that you hook it up to can take you down to this level. And what audio quest is trying to do is not get you down to this level. It's trying to get you closer to what that performance of that or the optimal performance of that device could be. So we will notice on these power centers, they have those high current outputs. Those are specifically for amplifiers. It is almost like, plugging your amplifier directly into the wall because if you plug an amplifier directly into the wall you're going to be able to access as much horsepower i'll call it at any given time you know when you're listening to a piece of music it can be very dynamic so at that instant where it gets louder there's a very impact in the sound your amplifier has to kick out more horsepower and typically plugging it into the wall is the best way to do that but hey you got a really big expensive amplifier you want to protect it too so that's what those high current outlets are, are really all about i mean correct me if i'm wrong man. Is my, my, am i saying that properly yeah it's delivering so your wall your standard wall outlet's a 15 amp outlet right so uh, an amplifier can draw way more than that for a short burst of time um, yeah these these Niagara products have what, what's called transient power correction, which gives you a current reserve for those transients, for those hard hits, for those impactful bass notes, for that for that dynamic contrast between the soft and the loud. You need that current reserve, and that's transient power correction coming from the high current outlets. You get that, and you get that current reserve, and you're able to hear those full. You know the eighteen twelve overture. You hear those cannons blast. Mm. That's a huge impactful moment that some amplifiers will compress because they don't get enough current. Yeah. Probably with the high current outlets, you, you don't get any of that, that compression. I'm sorry, you mentioned the 1812 Overture. That is my go-to first song I'm gonna listen to on any new system. Um, the Telarc version, I think it's fantastic. So anybody out there looking for a great demo, that's it. What's yeah. Matt, what's what's your first go-to like demo on your system? So, so it depends on what I'm listening to, um, what source. So if it's analog or digital, um, okay. I've been doing a lot of, uh, I've been doing some Dvorak. I use 1812 Overture a lot on analog. Um, I just got some brand new vinyl, which I ordered on Record Store Day last year that I never opened because I never had a turntable I thought worthy enough to play it. <laughs> so I just opened Now um, you do. I just opened some M83. I have uh, some U2. Um, right now, sitting on the turntable, this beautiful blue record is Evanescence. Mm. Oh yeah, record. Evanescence. Yeah, yeah. It was a record store day special edition release, which I really love. Um, and her vocals, I don't, I don't know what it is about Amy's vocals, but Amy, I love you. I'll tell you that right now. Um, <laughs> her vocals just just put me in a great spot. They're just soothing to me, and as hard yeah. as it gets, her vocals just take me to another place. And that's really, and, and let's be honest, that's what music is for, right? Our the owner of our yeah. company says music is the world's greatest drug. If you want to escape and you want to get away and you want to just turn your mind off and go somewhere else, put on music. There's yeah. no better way to transport yourself anywhere else in the world other than with just a piece of music. You find something that you love and you can get sucked in and you can get just pulled into that piece of music and just lose yourself for whether it's three and a half minutes or six minutes and whatever. Um, it's it's just pure enjoyment for me. So it varies depending on the day, depending on the weather. I'll pick something different. I, I still go to some London Grammar. I just came out with a new song that I found that I love that I just sent to you before this that we'll play around. Did with. check it out? It's uh, it's um, we'll post it afterwards. What it, what it's called? It's um, so dynamic and so good and so different. I love to just find new pieces of music all the time. Yeah, and it depends. Yeah, on I do it for uh, I do it for the goosebumps. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Hundred <laughs> percent. So here's a question that came in. Whoop. Right here it says, can you use any NRG power cord? And I think they were, I think he was talking more specifically. This is one we were talking about that you have to get one for their power centers. Um, so with Niagara, you're going to want to use NRG Z 
or better. Um, the reason for that is there's, there's ground noise dissipation in it. So energy X and Y don't have that. Energy Z, monsoon, blizzard, and the whole storm series, tornado, thunder, hurricane, um, all have a drag, and they all have this noise dissipation system. So you're going to want energy Z and higher with Niagara because you need that. Okay. And then this came in a little bit earlier. I want to get to this one right here. And Scott asked, what do you think of audio engine speakers? Um, so that's a line we also carry. Uh, I think they sound great. Um, we had them in our, in our showroom. Um, the, uh, they have a version also with Bluetooth built into there. So with the, I will tell you with the audio engine speakers, you really want to make sure that you have one of these, one of these dragonflies because they have an analog input on them. Um, so you're going to want to make sure that you have something to decode the sound properly from your portable device to, uh, to feed into there. But no, those are, those are great speakers as well. Yeah, they always sound great. good. Nice desktop audio. Yeah, it's, it's the two in that category, the two I, I think of first are Audio Engine and Canto, right? They have an assortment. They have all different yeah. sizes. They range in price. You know, they're from reasonable to well, not quite unreasonable. So good good choices. Uh, Audio Engine makes a great sounding product. So here's a question that I always get on the showroom floor. So maybe you can help me out with this. Everybody always says, where do the name of your products come from? I mean, you got subwoofer cables called Black Lab and Irish Red and Boxer. You have the Bridges and Falls line, the Golden Gates. And then, I mean, it's all over the, the, the Victorias that I have, the Yosemites and, and William Tell. <laughs> I mean, the names are all over the place. Where, where does he come up with the inspiration for these names? So I can only speculate, um, but all the names are, are come from the top. So Bill Lowe names all the product. Mm -hmm. um, the Woofer series makes sense because they're dogs and they're for subwoofer. <laughs> so that one, I had no issue with that. That's I thought that was brilliant when they did it. Um, yeah. The Bridges and Falls, and then there's the Storm Series, and the new top end speaker cables are called Mythical Creatures, and below that is Folk Heroes, and then there's Rocket Series. Everything has names. Um, you know, for example, HDMI cables, it's Pearl, Forest, Cinnamon, Chocolate, Carbon, yeah. uh, Vodka, Coffee, Diamond. We have names to everything. And boy, isn't that much easier than saying, hey, I need one of those HDMI 2.2s, five feet, six feet lengths. Like everything names, names stick with you. Um, and if I said to you, go get an HDMI 200.2 out of the back, you'd be like, a what? A what? <laughs> and you're like, oh, yeah, it's the red one. It, right. it relates. It's relatable. It's it's a human uh, interaction portion of our product. Um, and all the naming comes from the boss, comes from Bill O, whether he's a world traveler. He spends a lot of time on the road. He sees things. He, um, he, he figures things out where... You know, Victoria is named the Victoria Fall. It's it's part of the Bridges and Falls series. So everything has a name, and you know that you have a Victoria because it's called a Victoria. If you have, uh, a, well, RCA, I had to buy it because I have a daughter named Victoria too. Well, I mean, just saying. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're an RCA, if you had an RCA three hundred series, would you tell people that, or would you say I, I got some RCAs? But no, you say I have Victorias. I have Victorias. Well, yeah. Pride of ownership that you know yeah. your product has a name and it's associated and it's. And it's cool. And it's something that we've always done. And it's something that we'll always continue to do. Cool. Looks like we have a, uh, a recommendation here that came in um, as a good test for music. So I'm going to write that down. Yeah. Right share that with me after. Is there a... I actually think I saw this one recently pop up in a form for me to check out. Um, whether it was Absolute Sound or, or one of those a... uh, online stereo files. Sure. It just came up. So I've seen this before. But I'm definitely... All right. Cool. I'm, I'm always into, you know, yeah, into music. music so yeah. absolutely. All right. Okay. So let's see. Let's kind of see if some more questions come through right here. I'm just going to kind of recap. So we talked about home audio, home office, what that looks like, turntables. Um, let's just actually, let's go back to turntables real quick and analog connections. Uh, folks, when you're dealing with a turntable, the, the, the signal is so small and so minute. So it becomes really important uh, to use a cable that is going to, again, handle that signal really, really well from the turntable into your phono, uh, your phono stage. Um, so what do you have on that, uh, on that VPI again? On the, I, have on a, that? I have a leopard tone arm cable. So I have one of our dedicated uh, tone arm cables. So it's That's right, they do that too. with the ground wire attached to it on both ends. So it's, yeah, it's super important because there's, their turntables are susceptible to noise. It's a, such a low level signal, as you said, Anything that's not shielded is not going to do a great job of spitting out that noise. So uh, a cable with good shielded and, of course, a good ground wire. We make 
we actually make a separate, two separate ground wires for turntables. So if you have regular RCAs with good shielding and need a ground wire, we've got we've got our ground goody line of products as well. That's just a dedicated ground wire. Okay, yeah. So that's two different ways that you can. I mean, some some tur uh, turntables will have that. I mean, if anybody remembers what S video looks like, an S video cable, um, a bunch of little pins on it on, on in, a, in a circle oh, there. Yeah, that's uh, good. Yeah. yeah, some of the turntables out there will have a connection like that, and you can actually get from AudioQuest tone arm cables that will plug right into the bottom of the of the tone arm and then have RCAs on the output. Others are just obviously going to have, you know, female RCA ends on the, on the turntable itself. And from there, you can use a lot of different cables. Again, I use Victoria, so I come out of there. And the Victoria has a battery pack on it. Uh, dielectric, a DBS system, a dielectric biasing system that's built onto that. Matt, what the heck is that? Oh, dude, how many hours <laughs> you got? <laughs> so this is a, a patented technology that was originally developed many, many moons ago um, that basically shields the shield. So it, it puts a, an electrical charge at a very low voltage charge in the shield of the cable that allows it to both keep the signal within the conductors and okay. also rejects external noise. It was originally developed for the Navy to clean up radar screens to keep the noise off radar screens because the Navy kind of needed to know what was a plane there and, what you go. and what was just noise. So it, it was developed that way and it, it became part of our products a long time ago and it's yeah. developed and we've tried it with different voltages and different size batteries, but we've got it down to a point where we feel it works best to just, it, it makes the background appear to come out of nowhere. Um, and I've done a demo with it, same cable, non DBS and DBS and the DBS pack makes a world of difference as far as cleaning up any kind of extraneous little background noises that are trying to make their way into the cable mm -hmm. or trying to jump out and jump back in at various spots. So, you right. know, the, the dielectric or the shield is semiconductive. So we don't want to absorb any of that information into the shield and spit it back into the wire because that creates smear and, and that's, we're trying to avoid that. So DBS, right. all of that. So it has a battery in it, and there's a little uh, button, folks, on the on the battery pack. If you press it, it turns green, lets you know the battery is okay. The number one question, and you know where I'm going about to mm -hmm. ask you, is how long does that battery last? <laughs> so it, it, it so it's a, it's multiple batteries actually. It's small little um, little three volt batteries that you can buy okay. at CVS or any any hardware store. Um, yeah, and they they're generally good depending on you know anywhere between. I, I want to give a long range, but three and seven years. And the nice thing is that bottom of that battery pack unscrews with a little eyeglass screwdriver and you can swap them out yourself. It's field serviceable. So you got oh, nothing cool. to worry about. You don't have to worry about getting shocked because it's only little three volt batteries. There's not a lot of current. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you pull that screw out, the bottom comes off, you replace those batteries, the bottom goes back on, you screw it together and it works like new. Fantastic. Yeah. So many service calls we just saved right there. Yeah. So, <laughs> not rolling a truck for that. It's been around for a while. We actually have two versions of DBS now, but yeah, no, either way, no problem. Yeah. Uh, okay. Look, there was something that came in here from John. John asked, what RCA would you recommend for a VPI Cliffwood running a Saturn ground? So the Saturn is the ground wire that, that AudioQuest makes a VPI Cliffwood. That's their, that's their, that's their entry level $1,500 turntable with the built-in okay. chrono pre. That's actually what I asked to borrow, but knowing oh. Matt Weisfeld, this is what I ended up with. Um, <laughs> it's really anything with, with good with good shielding. So I would I would start with Evergreen. I would really probably say Golden Gate or Big Sur would be would be appropriate for that. But you could really start with Evergreen and try it out. Um, if you're working with a, a local dealer that's local to you, he could probably get you some to test and you can hear for yourself because that's we're a big believer in experience it for yourself hear that you can hear the difference and then settle on what you're most comfortable with. All right. Okay. Good answer. Good answer. All right. So now that we're on the analog uh, portion again here, we talked about the turntable hookup and we were talking about powered speakers in which we needed maybe uh, USB cables to or good power cables to um, your home office can consist of passive speakers too. Um, where you're taking your system and hooking it into an integrated amp, and from there you're hooking up passive speakers. So speaker wire, I, I see that back there. I'm very <laughs> intrigued. I want to I want to learn more about that. Maybe demo those sometime. Um, and you know, speaker wire. Speaker wire is everything from entry level bulk wire to you guys go. I mean, just top notch stuff. 
<laughs> we'll, we'll leave it at that um, and everything in between. So what uh, what wires are, are you using there? And let's talk about the differences in your speaker wire and what makes your you know, wire differently. It's it's solid, right? Solid core. Yeah, solid core. So everything from from Rocket 33 and up is is solid core um, copper conductors. Um, mm -hmm. A couple different grades of copper, and then we add in silver in, in the higher end because silver costs more money, but it's a better conductor. Uh, mm -hmm. I, what I have on here is Thunderbird, so it's the entry level to our mythical creatures series of of cables, mm -hmm. which is Thunderbird, Firebird, and 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 tops off at Dragon. Um, I had Rocket 88s on here, which is two levels below. So between Rocket and Mythical Creatures is Folk Heroes is William Tell and Robin Hood. Uh, Robin Hood, William Tell in that order. But uh, I ended up with Thunderbird just because it's a it's a perfect surface copper. So it's our, it's our good metal mm -hmm. um, and it's a lot of metal. So it just gave me this this huge open soundstage with all the detail I need because these these golden ears have, I don't know if you can see that AMT tweeter, which I know you and I are, are both fans of. Um, I love ribbon and AMT tweeters. Yeah, so it's they're 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 super detailed, and I wanted a I wanted a cable, and I listened to I don't know five or six different speaker cables, and I rested on on Thunderbird, and it's a Thunderbird Zero cable, which I'll explain in a second. But yep. it, it gave me everything I was looking for. It gave me that big open sound stage. The tweeter gave me all the detail I could ask for. Um, yeah. I got gobs of bass uh, out of a six inch two A. I was not expecting that. Um, so I've got Thunderbird on here. I, I, I changed it up from Rocket 88 because I wanted it, it just gave me a bigger sound stage, just, just more metal, to be honest with you. Um, well, and it's wired completely differently. I think I remember reading about that, how the between the Thunderbird and the Rocket 88, how all the how the internal wiring is completely different. So it's just a I mean, we folks, we just redid our entire showroom with all of the newest uh, AudioQuest speaker wire. And on our signature setup where we have Thunderbirds. Um, you know, we have a bi wire hookup, so we have a base cable and then a you know a, a full range uh, on the other. And even at low volumes, I mean, the instant that we change that system out to those speaker wires, uh, we have a pair of Focal Utopia Maestros. And at low volumes, I was just like, "Whoa, what just happened?" <laughs> yeah, that system is different. That is very different in a phenomenal way. And uh, so, yeah, I think those are great wires. So, the new I'm stuff sorry, is go ahead. amazing. The, the zero tech, it's we call it zero characteristic impedance within the audio mm -hmm. bandwidth. So the zero tech is pretty awesome. So zero is is our full range cable. Um, mm -hmm. if, you, if it's a single full range speaker, not bi wireable, use a zero cable. If you have a bi wireable capable speaker yep. or you want a bi amp, you can either buy a bi wire or a set of zero and a set of what we call base cables, which are terminated differently. Although it's Thunderbird zero, Thunderbird base, or Thunderbird bi wire. They're terminated differently to have zero zero characteristics for the mids and highs, and then the base cable carries only low frequencies. It's terminated differently than the full range cable, and it's only meant for bass. So if you want to do a bi wire or a bi amp, you get a zero and a bass, and you use them together, and um, it's an unbelievable difference when you when you can when you have the ability to bi wire. I recommend trying it because it's it's night and day. It takes some of those um, crossover components that might not not necessarily be the highest quality. Because yeah. capacitors or foil or whatever they are, even the best ones coming out of Germany are, are are great, but they still add impedance. They still add another step to the circuit. So anytime mm -hmm. you can buy wire, we recommend it, and it, it makes a world of difference, especially with the new Zero Tech cables. It's it's shockingly good um, how good you can get something to sound by by just upgrading the cables. And we're not making them better. Remember, we're not making the speakers better, but no. we what you paid for. You bought That's those right. Maestro Utopias. I wish I had Maestro Utopias. You bought those Maestro. Yeah. You spent a lot of money on them and you've got Mac amps, probably a stack of them. You might as well get the appropriate cables to get the most out of all the gear you bought, right? It's a Think of a cable as a component in your system. Yep. Not something that you can just say, I'll use whatever came in the box because you're just, you're just missing something. So totally. we're, gonna, we're gonna give you what you paid for when you bought all that gear. 100%. So yeah. And if, uh, I mean, by, by wiring is great. I'm going to go out uh, and tell you by amping is even better. And here's a, uh, a great, another uh, link I want to give you guys to a video that I did on the unboxing of the Macintosh MC901. Uh, this is an Audiophile's dream amplifier. It is a 600 watt solid state amplifier and also a 300 watt tube amplifier all on one chassis. Thing weighs two over 200 pounds shipping, 180 pounds out of the box, 
but it's the way you want to hook up a speaker. So with our setup and those, I have the those William Tells, or not the William Tells, I'm sorry, the uh, Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds. And I have the solid state hooked up to the base, and we have the tube hooked up to the highs, and it's just, it's magical, very magical. Right. Um, good question coming in here. Old audio file. What would you recommend for speakers in the $3,500 and under range for a two-channel system powered by a Macintosh MA5200? I personally, That's I would say, question. Matt, and you'll, I'll, we'll see what you think here. Um, I'd be looking at like Robinhood. I think that's a that's a great, great price point for those well, kinds of speakers. Speakers or speaker cables here? Recommend. What's What would you recommend for speakers in the third? Oh, I thought he meant speaker cables. You're right. Wouldn't recommend for speakers in the 3500 and under range for a two channel. I'm sorry. Well, so we're going to put Robin Hood speaker wires on them. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I like your idea. Thank you. Know, we always start with, okay, you want speakers? Okay, these are the cables that you need. Uh, speakers in that range, I would probably go to, because right now you can get, uh, Focal has a pair of speakers, the Aria 948s. And they're normally 5000 bucks, but at Worldwide Stereo, we got a special deal on a finish called a dark walnut finish. And they are $3,500 for a pair. Uh, it's a nice, big, loudspeaker two big woofers in them, two of the eight inch woofers in them. Got a nice mid range tweeter. Uh, it's part of their line that uses a driver. It's called a flax driver. So it's very rich, very warm. Uh, vocals sound awesome through those speakers. Um, so, and then the, the tweeter is a, uh, a blend of magnesium. aluminum magnesium. And it's got a nice, uh, like in the back of the housing, how they actually ventilate that tweeter uh, in the back does a really good job. It's really natural sounding. Uh, that's a great amplifier for them. They're, the efficiency on them is great. So I think that's a, a, a match made in heaven there personally. Matt, you have any other suggestions? Yeah. So, yeah, I love, I, you know, I love those Focal speakers. Um, I'm having worked for that brand for a couple of years. It's a, <laughs> it's a great, it's a great brand. It's a great speaker. Their, their engineering is, is fantastic. Um, the way they're we in France products. together. I think we were in France together. We, we, France together. we visited we the factory together. It's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool. And, and Adam could post a link to those specific speakers when he's done. But speakers are very subjective, right? Yeah. Uh, hard domes, soft domes, inverted domes, uh, AMT tweeters. So there's a lot of options, and everybody's ears are different. What I always recommend to people is have an idea of what you want to listen to first before you go to the store because you can get inundated. Worldwide's got some of the best brands on the planet. But you can go in there, and they've got, I don't know, seven different rooms of speakers in Montgomeryville, Pennsylvania. And yeah. you can – you can lose your mind um, trying to figure out what you like, but going with an idea. Focal is a great start. Um, I'm a little biased towards Golden Ear. Obviously, there's there's Triton Towers that are fantastic, possibly mm -hmm. available at a worldwide stern review soon. Um, there's there's they carry great brands like Dyn Audio, of course, Bowers and Wilkins. So speakers are subjective. Uh, those 948s are a great place to start, and at, at 3,500 bucks, they're really tough to beat. Considering that in the standard finish, they're five grand, right? So, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a fifteen hundred dollars savings for a vinyl wrap finish versus the real wood veneer. It absolutely does not affect the speaker in any way. So, no. sound is fairly cosmetic. Yeah. But it, that's a great value at that price. So, it's that would probably be pretty high up on my list, also. Yeah. Wow. So we certainly covered a lot today. Um, I think we went through again home office setups. We talked about a lot of a lot of different ways to um, hook up your components, whether it's a digital connection or we talked about passive speaker wire, power cables, power conditioning. So I'm sure there's gonna be some follow-up questions. Again, remember that you can always uh, direct message us or right here, send us any questions via email or call us. Um, you know, we have our uh, YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe to that for us. And uh, also on Facebook, you can follow us there. Um, and this is of course our website worldwidestereo.com um again you can leave us messages there and reach out to us um that yeah, way we're going to post this on our facebook page our audio quest facebook page oh, right. channel also because yeah you guys are a great partner for us and and whatever we could do to, to to share the love it's um it's fantastic and listen this was an honor for me to be a part of with team worldwide because you know i got nothing but love for you and your whole company and and, and bob and, and ron and and everybody so this was an honor for me to be a part of, and uh, you, you know, we're all good. So I'm really, I'm really <laughs> this was this was pretty cool for me. And whatever whatever we could do, Audio Quest to help you guys out in a time like this, I know we're uh, you guys are getting orders from your customers, and you don't have it in stock. 
we will ship it directly to customers' houses for you. So we will not leave your customers high and dry right now. We're taking care of everybody. We're still, we're yeah. still we do. And I do that throughout the year, actually. What's great with AudioQuest, I put an order in for a, a client and we can direct ship to the house. Um, also, there isn't there, I've, I've done it once before on a pair of uh, Oak speaker cables in the past, a trial program. Yeah, That's, in home uh, trial. You get, you, so we can arrange through Worldwide to get products delivered directly to your door. Um, you live with them for a couple of weeks, you listen to them, and then eventually you don't send them back. You just pay for them. But <laughs> what happens is, yeah, we send them to you on a trial basis and you can put them in your system and hear them in your house because sometimes it's different than hearing them at the store. So yeah, yeah. we offer in home trial on a lot of our higher end stuff. It, it's not easy to make a decision on an $8,000 speaker cable online, but you want to try it, we can get it to your home for an in-home trial, listen to them for a couple of weeks in your system, and then decide if you want to keep them or send them back. I mean, it's, it's that simple. Yeah. Yeah. So I've done that before and it's, it's because again, you never know with your equipment, how much of a difference it's going to make. So that's a, a nice program that you guys have. Yeah. We, we love, we're, we're here, whatever it helps to, t to take care of the end consumer, whatever helps them make their decision process easier because you can really go crazy. We, we have mm -hmm. about 8,000 SKUs that we inventory on a daily basis and you know, another, another 10,000 or so that we custom make. So you're not going to have them all there. That's physically impossible. No, possible. So we try. <laughs> We do what we can to help you guys out in these in these types of cases. So if there's somebody that wants to hear something, you let you let Adam know, you let Worldwide know, and we'll we'll figure out how to make it happen. Great. So uh, I think we're pretty much done here as far as the topics we want to talk about. I'm going to wait, hang up. We'll hang around a little bit longer. Again, there is that lag. See if anybody other has any other follow up questions before we go. Um, again, everybody can always reach out to us for for any questions. We're here to help. We want to know, you know, we want to know what you want us to, to do. This is a, a learning experience. It's an interactive experience. This is now our second live video that we've done. And we got such great response from the first one. Thank you, everybody who's helping us out with this. And, and we want to make this better for you. Um, you know, we certainly have a lot of fun doing it and, and talking. I could talk about audio all, all, all day. Just ask my wife. Uh, but, it, you know, I mean, it, it's... That's, it's that's that's no pressure on me then. This is your second one and I'm your first guest. No pressure over here, right? It's no, no, none. <laughs> right, please like it. Please oh. like and share. Please like and share. I'll never get invited back again. <laughs> so yeah, anything that you guys want us to cover out there, let us know. You know, uh, anything you thought could be better, suggestions, comments. We'll take it all, please. Um, and by the so way, Adam, have you done a Zoom meeting lately? Because I have my cobalt on Zoom and it's like the people are in the room. You could do oh. little things, little details. I I didn't even think of that. I mean, yeah. I could, yeah, and I haven't. So I'll definitely, uh, definitely give that a shot here. I just have to throw this up here. Yeah, we rock. <laughs> we appreciate. Uh, that. Let's see here. Oh, here's a good one. It's an Adam, what was the name of the device to rip CDs to a hard drive that you mentioned earlier in the webinar? Uh, Bobby, Bobby D. That was the uh, Blue Sound Vault Two. So that's a product made by Blue Sound. That's going to have all of the streaming services built into it, but also a CD ripper and a two terabyte onboard hard drive. Um, and that was when I talked about hooking it up both ways. I like uh, hooking it up with the optical connection for most of my stuff and then using the analog connection whenever I'm dealing with um, uh, MQA stuff because right. the decoder for MQA is fully baked into the uh, Blue Sound piece. And Blue Sound, I think, is a great, great platform. Um, and we can always uh, talk about that more. Again, if you have more questions, Bobby, give me a call uh, or reach out to me at hello at Worldwide Stereo or www.stereo.com. Again, I'll get that banner up real quick. There it is. Hello at www.stereo.com or there's our phone number there. So let's take one more peek here. See if there's any more uh, questions coming through. Thanks, gentlemen. Really enjoy it. Let's see. Hope you do it again. Absolutely, Paul. Paul, we'll do it. Do it again. Uh, let us know again what uh, what other further things uh, you want to uh, us to talk about. Um, all right. Yeah, I'll be. I'll I can be your Ed McMahon if you want a sidekick. I You're can be your Ed McMahon on some of these. When I could just sit off to the side and, and you can be the Johnny Carson character. I, I can just throw out some loft out some comments every so often and then just keep my mouth shut which is really hard for me but we got to get one of those scoodoodles where you can draw on it like john madden and say boom you know boom, oh, <laughs> boom. Do whatever it takes whatever it takes 
All right, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up here. Thank you so much for joining. Remember, you can always go to worldwidestereo.com. We have 60 day shipping there, uh, 60 day return policy, excuse me, free shipping. And we are authorized dealers for everything that we sell. It was so much fun talking to you guys today. We will certainly reach out to you and let you know what our next one is. This is Adam from Worldwide Stereo reminding you to listen to music every day. Matt, thank you so much for joining us. It was a great time. I'm sure we'll do it again. Um, Thanks, have Rob. a great day, folks. Yeah, take care. Bye. Bye.